morning, everybody. Welcome to another edition of Lab 207 webcast. My name is Mr. Kite, and I'll be hanging out with you today as we continue on in our series about ecology. Topic for the day is going to be threats to biodiversity. So like always, let me get you your objectives and we'll get going for the day. By the end of this video, three things to know or be able to do. The first one is to list the three types of biodiversity. Second is to describe the importance of biodiversity and finally finish up with linking specific human actions to loss of biodiversity. So before we get going, let's talk about conservation biology. Um, for the last nine months, we have had probably close to 100 videos talking about all the aspects of biology. And so we're going to wrap up our final two videos by talking about the idea of conservation biology, which is essentially the idea that the living world needs taken care of. Human actions are having significant impact on the world around us. So this branch of biology, conservation biology, is concerned with what can we do to reduce the impact of human activity on the living world. So going forward, we're going to start out by talking about the types of biodiversity. There's essentially three levels of biodiversity that ecologists look at when they're assessing the health of an ecosystem. The first one is the genetic level. So this would be all of the genetic material within an ecosystem. The greater the genetic diversity, the more raw material there is for evolution to be resistant to disaster, be resistant to disease. The less genetic diversity, then the less stable the ecosystem is going to be because it's going to be less able to adapt to whatever challenges may face it. Second one is going to be species biodiversity, and that would be the variety of species in an area. And we've already talked about an area that has more species is more stable and more resilient than an area that has fewer species. And then ecosystem diversity is the number of different ecosystems around the world. So there's essentially three levels when looking at different types of biodiversity. Now I want to give you some stats to just kind of bring this home. Um, talking about conservation biology, first one, 21% of mammal species around the world are endangered or threatened. So there are several different levels. An endangered species is a species that's on the brink of becoming extinct if not protected. A threatened species is on the brink of becoming endangered. So around the world, almost a quarter of all mammal species are endangered or threatened. In America, 730 American plant species are threatened. 30% um, of fish species around the world have become extinct or are presently threatened. And the last stat, 32% of animal, and sorry, words are hard, 32% of amphibian species are threatened or endangered. So big chunks of the living world are, I guess, under threat from the actions of humans. Now, why should we care about this? There's an old proverb that talks about us having the earth on loan from our children, not having it as a gift from our ancestors. So looking forward, um, we seriously need to start taking a long view, thinking, hey, the earth that we've got is only one earth, like it's a closed system. Nothing new comes in, nothing old nothing is able to go out. So the earth is what we make of it and what we do to it and whatever we do to it probably will not so much have consequences for us as it will for our kids in the future. So humans are really good at looking at the short, at the short term, what's good for me, what's good for what's going on right now, but we need to start looking at the long view. How can we preserve the earth for future generations so that it can keep doing the things that it does? Um, in this idea of conservation, I want to talk about two major reasons why we should take care of the earth. So the first one is genetic diversity, which is kind of like nature's tool chest. So many medicines that humans use on a daily basis were originally derived from plants. Um, the food and the foods that we get, like plant and animals, those originally came out of the natural world. Um, there have been instances where plants have been stricken by a disease or a fungus, and researchers have been able to go out, survey native plant species, find um, genes that are resistant to that disease, and place them into the commercial crops, thus saving the crops. So anytime humans need to make a fix or an improvement, the more genetic diversity there is available in the world, that gives us a wider range of tools that we can look at to pull in, to use, to solve whatever problem we need. And so if we are destroying natural habitats, if we are destroying the biodiversity and the genetic diversity of the world, it's kind of like taking tools and throwing them out of our tool chest so that we can never get back to them again. Another reason we need to look at taking care of the earth is this idea of ecosystem services. Ecosystem services are basically things that the earth does for us for free 
that we either could not do for ourselves or would be terribly expensive to do. Some examples of things. This would be the foods we eat. This would be animals that pollinate flowers. This would be water filtration, air filtration. This would be building resources. This would be medicines provided to us. This would be the beauty of a sunset. All of those things are considered to be ecosystem services, and they're stuff that we couldn't do, or if we could do, it would be ridiculously expensive to do it. And every time, you know, habitat is lost or nature is somehow damaged, we run the risk of losing some of those ecosystem services that keep us alive, but that we can't really do for ourselves. And I want to wrap up with specific threats to biodiversity. There are four of them. I'm going to talk just a little bit about each one. The biggest threat to biodiversity right now is habitat loss. Human population is growing. We've talked about that. More people means more land is needed. And as humans grow, we're going to clear forest, whether it be to build on or to drain wetlands for farming or to make room for housing or ranching, cattle grazing, whatever. Um, this is the biggest threat to the earth at the moment. The fact that humans are growing out rather than growing up, rather than building vertically, we're building horizontally. So one of the things that we need to look out for heading into the future is habitat loss. And another thing is in our increasingly globalized world, as people are able to travel from one place to another, introduced species are becoming a problem. Now, every species is uniquely adapted to its own ecosystem. If you bring in an outside species, that outside species a lot of times will take over because it doesn't have any natural predators, there's nothing really limiting its growth, and it might be a top predator that can just kind of run roughshod over an area. So as an introduced species runs roughshod over an area, it's taking resources away from native species that would normally be in that habitat, and as those resources are taken away, those native species decline. There's also over-harvesting, which you can look at that in several ways. One extreme example would be poaching. Um, easy, like very visual elephant and rhino species across Africa are threatened by um, being endangered and extinct because they have been harvested for their tusks. Um, you could also look at fish stocks. Um, globally, fish stocks have been almost decimated by the fishing industry because people like fish, and so global fish stocks are on the verge of collapse. And then the last one is global change. Now. As the climate changes, um, obviously ecosystems are going to change. Plants and animals, as we've talked about, are adapted to specific conditions. So as those conditions change, that means that the plants and animals that are adapted to those changes are either going to have to adapt and die. And unfortunately, in a lot of cases, conditions are changing so quickly that um, evolution doesn't have the ability to keep pace with those changes. So all of those things that are things that threaten the biodiversity of the world. And I'm going to close off with that. Um, I hope this has given you a little better insight into things that humans are doing that are threatening biodiversity. Um, in future videos, we'll talk about some things that we can do to kind of help the earth. But for now, I thank you for joining us on the Lab 207 webcast. My name is Mr. Kite, and we'll see you again.